What is up everybody? Reset Renegade here. ResetRenegade.com. Doing a little bit of driving around. Checking some stuff out. Um, haven't hit you guys with a video in the car for a little while, so I thought I would uh, I would take some time. I had something on my mind. Um, guy emailed me the other day and he was talking about something that I think could maybe benefit the community. And so I thought I'd give you my opinions on it. And uh, just see where the conversation goes, I guess. Um, he asked if he should be niching down. Um, he said he was talking to a buddy of his buddy said to find a niche and um, or as you European people call it a niche um, find a niche and just only buy and sell that stuff and he asked me what I thought about that and I told him what I do so here's what I here's what I'm gonna tell you as well um, this is what I do first of all when you niche down when you find a market a uh, like military items or electronics or photo stuff, photography gear, you know, cameras and that kind of crap. If you build a clientele within that group, your repeat customers will be a lot more frequent. Um, whereas, and I know a lot of people are thinking, well, why? I, thr I frequent the thrift store a lot. That's because that's your, that's their target demographic. You can do a thrift store type environment as a reseller, but it's harder to get repeat customers than it is for a major you know, thrift store to get repeat customers. So here's my philosophy on it. I go to thrift stores and I buy from variety type sources like that and storage lockers and auction houses and all these other places that have just a variety of things. And then what I do is I separate all that stuff into niches. And for those of you that don't know, I have four different eBay channel or eBay uh, accounts, and I have two Amazon accounts, um, which is a special circumstance. Don't just go signing up for another Amazon account. You have to get approved. Um, but anyway, um, I have four eBay channels, oh, damn it, eBay accounts, um, and that's because I niche them down. Like for instance, I'm not going to give away my niches because I don't want competition in them, but um, let's say one of my eBay channels is uh, antiques, right? So all that I sell on that eBay store is antiques. What that does for me is it allows me to collect buyer's email addresses and demographics within my audience on that specific channel of sales and then I can remarket to them. So when they get an email from me after they've purchased from my antique store and it says, hey, got new, got some new antiques in today. Um, they're automatically interested because they've proven to me by purchasing something from me in the past that they are interested in that topic. Okay, so I've got antiques and I've got photo gear and I've got electronics and then I have one that's that's just, you know, a modge podge or a hodge podge of crap, you know, like a thrift store. And that's kind of where everything else goes. And, uh, and on that channel, I do different types of promotions, kind of like the, kind of like what thrift stores do. I do penny auction. You know, I started off with penny and say, hey, this week these items are on penny. And generally, those are the items that haven't sold at auction or haven't sold um, on my buy it nows for maybe two or three cycles. So those that channel gets a separate type of promotion. The point that I'm trying to make, without getting into big old marketing plan is that when you take and you buy from a variety source, like a thrift store, a storage auction, or somewhere where you just get a variety of topics, um, and then you take those and you separate them into niche categories and sell yourself in those categories specifically, you can ask a higher price. That's why you can find something at Goodwill that's an antique, and you can take it to an antique booth, or you can take it to a boutique and you can ask two, three, four times as much because people going into the antique booth or the uh, boutique or whatever are going there specifically for that niche topic. They're not looking to go search for this one specific item through a plethora of crap. You've done all that work for them and for doing all that work, you get to ask a higher price. Um, so that's my philosophy on it. Yes, sell in niches. No, don't buy in niches, if that makes sense buy anything and everything that you can sell. Um, maybe narrow it down to two or three specialized categories that you that you really focus on. But if you come across anything that you can make a buck on, buy it and sell it. 
uh, that's my philosophy. The, the lighter you are with your education, um, and the more diverse you are with your products, the more money you're going to make. Period. I mean, that, at least that's my opinion. And so, that's kind of what I advise this guy to do. I said, you know what, buy, buy anything that you think that you can make money, money on, separate it into a few different categories, you know, general overview type categories, and create a brand in each of those categories, or create an eBay account, or, you know, how, whatever your sales channel is. And this is with the exception of things like Craigslist. Obviously, you don't have to niche down on Craigslist, because nobody knows who's selling what on Craigslist, it's all anonymous pretty much until you actually exchange phone numbers and go see the item or whatever. But when you when you have a an online storefront, like an eBay channel, or eBay account, or a an, um, even an Amazon account, so when you're creating an online storefront, create a niche for that storefront and you'll do better, you will, you will rank better for search terms because all of your other stuff is going to be related to that, to antiques or whatever, and your clientele will buy more stuff from you. Because if you've got a an eBay channel, I'm just going to call it an eBay channel, that's what it is now, it's an eBay channel. If you've got an eBay channel that uh, sells just a variety of crap, you might get a couple people that are looking through it, you know, and they might find a couple things and buy maybe two or three items from you. But if you have an eBay channel that's dedicated to antiques or dedicated to photo gear, right? Especially photo gear. And you're selling flashes and cameras and everything else in that genre, you can cross sell. You can say, hey, you're looking for a camera? Check it out. I've got a, a flash that works for that camera as well. And I've got two lenses and also some batteries. So buy all three and I'll, I'll throw in free shipping. Now you've just increased your, your sale way up and you've increased the amount that that person's going to buy from you and you've also increased the likelihood that that person's going to come back to you when they need more photo stuff because they know that that's what you sell so again that's what i think as well um so that's what that's what my thoughts are let me know what your thoughts are in the description below as always thanks for watching like favorite subscribe comment do the youtube thing and uh, i'll see you guys next time